Professor Clements again with a little discussion on circumpolar stars and precession. So the uh, video that was uh, showing here gives us circumpolar stars. Uh, see if you can find the Big Dipper. It's a pretty large hint on the uh, sky map here, the handle, the bowl. Pointer stars take us to Polaris, the North Star. And notice that it's staying pretty close to about the same position in the sky. Again, Polaris is above the Earth's rotation axis and uh, maintains that uh, fixed point on the celestial sphere, the North Celestial Pole. We're interested now in the group of stars that, for a particular observer, do not go below the horizon. They do not set. So the bowl of the dipper would fit that category here. We've got some obstacles, some buildings in the way. Uh, the trailing uh, end of the tail of the Ursa Major, uh, end of the handle of the Big Dipper, uh, is not going below the horizon. So it's circumpolar. What does, what's a characteristic of a circumpolar star? Well, it's relatively close to the North Celestial Pole. A circumpolar star is close to the North Celestial Pole. In addition, the uh, location of the observer on the Earth makes a difference as to whether a star will be circumpolar or not. Uh, so we need to talk a little bit about uh, the declination of stars. Declination is a coordinate on the celestial sphere that measures how far away from the celestial equator the star is located. So on the celestial equator, the declination is zero degrees. The North Celestial Pole is 90 degrees. And a star in here about 80 degrees declination. A star out here perhaps 70 degrees declination. A star out here about 60 degrees declination. Uh, so towards the end of this video, we're going to see a little illustration of the calculation. A simple calculation that tells you whether a star is circumpolar or not circumpolar. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, let's go on to precession. So, I've mentioned before the Earth is something like a big spinning top. If you played with a toy top recently, I hope so, you might notice that it wobbles. Its rotation axis is not uh, fixed, but instead it wobbles around. The Earth experiences a wobble also. Due to gravity from the Moon, uh, the Earth has a wobble in its uh, pointing of its rotation axis. This is called precession in that the North Celestial Pole wanders, I wouldn't say wander, but moves on the celestial sphere over a period of about 26,000 years, if I'm remembering right at this point. Uh, I'm going to go on to another slide here. So this shows an animation, this uh, 26,000 year per uh, procession event. Right now the Earth's North Celestial Pole or the Earth's North Pole is directed very near to Polaris on the sky at the end of the handle a little dipper. But over 26,000 years the Earth slowly wobbles in space and the North Celestial Pole moves around the sky. Uh, when the Egyptians uh, built the pyramids um, there was a different star that was close to the North Celestial Pole. And those pyramids are lined up with that star. Um, so that's precession. It causes uh, the declination of stars to change over time. And another coordinate that I won't worry about. But a big effect for us to consider here is that the North Celestial Pole moves in a circle on the sky slowly for 26,000 years and that effect is called precession. So I'm going to switch now to a uh, little handout here on uh, talking about declination and the uh, uh, effect or calculation of circumpolar stars. So again declination is an angle measure how far we are north or south of the uh, celestial equator. Fremont has a uh, latitude of 41 degrees, or 41 degrees north of the Earth's equator. Stars have a certain declination, a certain number of degrees north or south of the celestial equator. 
The North Celestial Pole is 90 degrees away from the celestial equator, just as the Earth's North Pole is 90 degrees from the Earth's equator. Uh, it turns out that the North Celestial Pole altitude above the horizon is equal to your latitude. So for Fremont, the North Celestial Pole is 41 degrees above the horizon. For someone standing at the Earth's North Pole, the North Celestial Pole is right overhead at the zenith. That's 90 degrees away from the horizon. Now the circumpolar stars are those stars that do not set and do not rise. Um, in order to be circumpolar, we have to be close to the North Celestial Pole on the celestial sphere. And then as the Earth rotates, and you know, from our point of view it looks like the sky is rotating, uh, stars will circle around the North Celestial Pole. When they're below the North Celestial Pole, they have to be somewhat close to the pole, otherwise they'll set. Uh, to be circumpolar, they have to be somewhat close to the North Celestial Pole. And in the case of Fremont, because uh, the North Celestial Pole is our latitude number of degrees of altitude above the horizon, uh, the star has to be within 41 degrees of the North Celestial Pole. If that's the case, it won't set. If it's only 10 degrees away from the North Celestial Pole, that star will make a circle around the North Celestial Pole during the night and will not set night and day, 24 hours of Earth rotation. So let's uh, take a look at the calculation. The calculation is only this. You take 90 degrees and you subtract the declination of the star. That tells you how far away you are in angle from the North Celestial Pole. Well, a particular case. The stars uh, were given that the star has a declination of 72 degrees. Will it be circumpolar for an observer in Fremont, Nebraska? And to find this answer, I'd first do a calculation. 90 minus 72, that is 18 degrees. Check it on your calculator. This star is only 18 degrees away from the North Celestial Pole. 18 is smaller than 41 degrees. That's the angle from the pole down to the horizon. This star will be circumpolar. What about a star that has a declination of 35 degrees? Is it circumpolar? The star is 90 minus 32. That's 58 degrees from the North Celestial Pole. As this star circulates around the sky, when it's below the North Celestial Pole, that 58 degrees is larger than the 41 degrees from the pole down to the horizon. This star, if I do a little calculation, 58 minus 41, it's going to be 17 degrees below the horizon. It will not be visible. The star is not circumpolar. Again, stars have to be closer than 41 degrees to the North Celestial Pole. The angle to the North Celestial Pole is to be smaller than 41 degrees to be circumpolar for an observer in Fremont, Nebraska. So we do two steps. We do 90 degrees minus the declination of the star. We compare that to the angle from the North Celestial Pole to the horizon. For Fremont, that's 41 degrees, our latitude. If this uh, distance, angular distance from the pole to the star is smaller than the latitude of the observer, the star is circumpolar. The star is circumpolar. A um, little thought question, don't have this uh, written out, but suppose you're standing at the North Pole of the Earth. What stars will be circumpolar? You're standing at the North Pole of the Earth. Now, the North Celestial Pole is 90 degrees above the horizon. The star has to be within 90 degrees of the North Celestial Pole to be circumpolar for someone at the North Earth's North Pole. Well, that's the full northern half of the sky. Any star that has a declination greater than zero degrees will be circumpolar for an observer at the North Pole of the Earth. Now that's where we're going to uh, stop this video. I uh, will uh, find my stop control here someplace and uh, let you uh, keep reading and asking questions.